from within, there was just, just this huge amount of fire just came boom, 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 straight down towards my head. My team leader was on my shoulder, and he just returned fire straight in, back into that window. There was fire going both ways past me. Well, I just pulled away as quickly as I could down to the edge. I, I didn't even look for any holes. I just knew that I was OK. I, I, was, I was great, and I felt great. We were just absolutely stoked that we had our man. Roger, just keep your hands done. I went round to the front with Ash, and we just um, held on the front doors of this place about 12 metres out on, on the boundary. We fired into the house, fired high to keep him down. The idea that hopefully there was no one else in the house, so I fired high. Let him know that we were here. He wasn't gunning down women and kids. Hello, David! Um, please! Then Pete and I called on him to come out. You know, put your weapon down and th that's part of our call. So that was done, you could hear this call going on. By well, this stage, I'd thrown some tear gas in, we had a gas mask on, and we were yelling out to him to come out. And, uh, and eventually he did, he came out the front door. If he'd just come out and put his hands in the air, no matter what he'd have done prior to that, you couldn't shoot him. No matter what you thought, no matter how repulsive, no matter how how much loathing you had for him, you could not shoot him. He came to the front door and, uh, unlike the movie, he sort of just slinked out the door. And I sort of describe it like a rat leaving a, um, leaving a ship, you know, just trying to slink out. Oh, please, don't be working. I wasn't even sure, and this is how bizarre it seems, I wasn't even sure this is the right guy. And how bizarre is that? I couldn't see the gun for a start off, and then uh, as he turned, he had the gun um, on the inside between him and the door as he slunk out of the door. Straight away, um, I called on him, yelled out, stop police, and um, straight away, he just started bringing his gun up and shooting towards us. We opened up on him, and he was shot five times, and he dropped. And then he started screaming, kill me, effing kill me. Kicked his weapon away, and then just tried to apply the handcuffs. And I pointed my weapon, which is a MP5 machine gun, at his head and I seriously thought about killing him for a second. But I didn't, because I'm not a murderer. Roger, we have the offender. He has been injured. It's quite serious. He was still struggling, and it was a real effort. You know, we were kicking him and trying to, trying to subdue him to, um, to, get the, to get the handcuffs on, and finally we got the handcuffs on. He'd been shot in the head, and there was blood everywhere, and there was mucus all over his hand. And he pulled his hands out of the handcuff. He must have been extremely strong. The Iroquois was uh, arrived pretty quickly with the medical staff on board, and he received medical treatment really quite quickly. He died at the scene. After such a harrowing 24 hours, the ATS squads walked back out of the village. As we walked out along, along the road, the out, the, a lot of the people had come forward to get back into their houses, and they sort of lined the road, and, and we sort of walked through the middle of them, and they just they clapped, clapped us. Yeah, how strange. 